What's going on guys and girls? For those of you that have been following along on Instagram, we decided to do a bit of an experiment where I moved the DP projector that was on the right hand side over to the left hand side to see if my big guy here would change his behavior at all. And we did see that. His previous behavior, he would sit in this spot over here. And that was his sort of favorite spot. Now that continued for a little bit, but as time went on, he has slowly migrated to a more central basking position. Now, there's a lot of talk on the DP projectors not being natural wavelengths. A lot of people are moving away from them. I have not personally had any issues at all, and I've been using them for a very extended period of time. However, as you can see, it is not the primary heat source in this enclosure. Now, these lights all come on at different times to replicate different times of day and night. So, as you can see up here, we've got a DP projector, UV, incandescent, and a spot LED full spectrum bulb. Now, these come on to simulate the increase in light and heat throughout the day with the DP projector providing the simulation of residual heat that gets held in the environment in nature. So let's talk about my opinions on the use case of DP projectors. In this situation here it is not used for the primary basking. It is used to simulate residual heat held in the environment after dark and to set a bit of an ambient temperature during the day which they are quite good at especially if positioned over rocks like you can see here. Now another use I've found for these is I have an albino Darwin carp python and she is extremely light sensitive. If I put an incandescent in her enclosure she will not bask under it at all. She would rather sit in the cold. So in order for me to keep her safe, I would need to run a very high ambient temperature. And even then, she wouldn't be actively basking, so she wouldn't be getting all of the benefits of really heating up her core temperature. Now, her primary basking is actually a DP projector, which isn't recommended. However, the DP projector provides infrared spectrums that a ceramic heat emitter does not. And ceramic heat emitters can get very dangerous, especially if not used in a proper manner. So I like to avoid using them. So let's talk about whether you should use a DP projector in your setup. I think the DP projector is a good addition to a standard basking zone and by a standard basking zone I mean an incandescent, a DP projector and a UV. Now this will allow you to provide daytime heat, nighttime heat as well as the important UVB to help with vitamin absorption and calcium absorption. Now, if you have a special needs animal, for lack of a better word, this may be your best option to provide a basking zone to a light sensitive animal. There are albino morphs in a lot of different species now, and with the albino gene, you will get light sensitivity. And if you pay attention to the behavior of your animal and see that it is not basking, that is a really, really bad thing. So why choose a DP projector over a ceramic heat emitter, which are always recommended on Facebook? For starters, ceramic heat emitters can put a ton of heat back into your light socket, compromising the safety of the wires and possibly causing a fire. Another reason, depending on what thermostat you're using, some thermostats, when they fail, will lock the heat on 
the dial types that you see mounted on the back of enclosures when they fail they lock the connector to the shut position putting your lights on uncontained unregulated and if you're using a ceramic heat emitter that's capable of getting excessively hot you will turn your enclosure into an oven unless you have a very, very large enclosure. Something else to consider with these bulbs is that they provide different wavelengths of infrared. The DP projector will provide both infrared A, B and C, whereas a ceramic heat emitter won't. It will only provide infrared C, which is basically only good at heating air. Now, if it's the only heat source, your animal will sit under it, but it's very, very inefficient. The animal's not able to use much of that wavelength. So, all in all, as a supplementary heat source, the DP project is just a better option. Now, if you've got the luxury of not needing to provide any heat at night, if you live in a warm place, then you might not need this. You might just be able to go with your incandescent for your daytime heat on a timer, which switches off, giving you your day-night cycle. But personally, I've spent time up north. I've spent time in Queensland and the Northern Territory. And it doesn't get cold immediately. That heat lingers in the rock. It lingers in the sand and soil. And I find this a really, really good way to simulate that residual heat into the night before all of the heat turns off, giving a nice cool drop and triggering a lot of the natural behaviors that you see, like our big guy here basking this morning after his night of no heat. So all in all, I think that the DP project is probably one of the most readily available, good, lightless heat sources that we have available to us, at least here in Australia. And I'm going to continue using them for the, all the reasons that I listed. If you can get your hands on something like the Reptile Systems Gold Lamp, I've heard a lot of really good things about those. We're only just starting to get access to them here. And I don't know how they would go in a smaller enclosure as they are quite a big unit, but it is something that I would like to play around with in the future. A few things that are probably important to mention is the issues that people have been running into with these units are dehydration as the wavelengths apparently are very good at evaporating water so if you are going to use these please make sure that your humidity levels are appropriate that you're spraying your animals down that you're providing sufficient water to avoid these issues happening it's important that we pay attention to our animals and don't just go off of what somebody says you should and shouldn't use Learn to read the behavior of your animal. Learn to pay attention and notice changes and analyze what those changes mean. That is the only way you are going to get good at keeping long term. Hopefully you've found this video helpful and hopefully it gives you something to think about. And I look forward to sharing the future of my keeping and how I go about pushing the limits and bringing forward natural behaviors and sharing that with you all. Until then, stay safe, love your animals, and I'll see you on the next one.